On our first episode we're going to cover is Matthew 13. And to begin, let's play a little game of Pictionary. I'm going to draw something on the board and, and as soon as you can figure out what it is, you can just say it out loud from, from wherever you're watching. There you go. Any, anybody know what this is? This is a pair of bowls because today's lesson is on the parables, so a little play on words here. This isn't just to, to be silly, it's actually instructive because if you look in the Bible dictionary, what a parable is is a setting side by side two things. What you put into the one bowl is something concrete, something tangible, something knowable, something very familiar to the audience. What goes side by side in the other bowl is something that's more abstract, something theoretical, something principle-based, some idea associated with the gospel of Jesus Christ that maybe is harder to grasp with, with normal senses. And so by setting them side by side, you can teach incredible truths about these really lofty uh, ideals and principles of the gospel so they're a little more understandable. In fact, if you go to Matthew 13, you're going to get eight parables and after he told the first parable, which we'll come back to because it's a significant one, then the disciples in verse 10, it says, they came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why, why, why don't you just speak plainly? And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. In other words, you can see some of the mercy of God here portrayed in that Jesus is now, instead of just teaching the principles of the gospel directly, he's telling stories that are symbolic in nature so that those who have ears to hear and eyes to see and the help of the Holy Ghost and who seek to understand, they're going to learn the lessons and the more you know, the more accountable you are. So one way to look at this would be the Pharisees or the scribes or the Sadducees or people who really don't intend to follow, he's not going to give them his, his gospel or the higher law, he's not going to teach them these truths because it's going to set them up for more failure perhaps, one way to look at it. So imagine the disciples are like really good students who decide to stay after class to ask the teacher more questions. And in the ancient world, when you would have rabbis out teaching, they might get a large crowd and they will teach several things, people would be interested to learn, but then most people just go home. But a few really dedicated learners will stick around to ask more questions, to probe more deeply. And that's what we see the disciples doing. And the, the word disciple means student. So we think about what we want to become as disciples. We also want to be students. We want to be sticking around after the main lesson has been done and to ask more questions, to dig more deeply, and to ponder and explore more fully. So we see this interesting teaching and learning dynamic that Jesus is helping people to learn, and then there are a few who choose to learn more deeply. Something that uh, I, I love when it comes to parables is an insight that I learned from Brother Bob Millett years ago, Robert Millett, when he said, when you're looking at parables, there's usually only one interpretation. There, there's one main intent for why Jesus tells the story, but there are infinite numbers of applications, angles that you can look at this parable from, from these various angles to see other applications, how that parable and that interpretation can apply to your life. So what you have on the board here is one of those myriad applications that you could, could take the, the approach of studying. 